Hi, Helen Linda again with our final presentation of week two of the D4L content creation module. Now we get to the really fun part, selecting visuals to make your content pop. Dynamic visual content is equally as important as concise and accurate textual content, but it's also the most challenging and sometimes time-consuming part of the process. Setting the right tone in a clean way comes down to consistency in color palettes and easy-to-read fonts. Picking images that illustrate and even elevate your topic is hard enough, but ensuring that you're using images that are ethically sourced and attributed adds to the challenge. In week one, you learned about the importance of contrast, but consistency is equally as important. It can be really distracting to some learners to see a mix of fonts and sizes or too many competing color choices. Once you've drafted your content visuals, it's always a good idea to look at them for consistent sizing and placement, and for images that don't distract from your point but elevate it. This is definitely the fun part for a lot of people, but going back through with a critical eye is key to a clean message. Since the internet is full of visual content, it's easier than ever to find what seems like just the right image. But just because you're using an image for educational purposes doesn't necessarily make that fair use every time. Avoid the pitfalls of fair use of visual materials by going directly to sources that make rights easy to determine and even if the material doesn't require it, always use attribution. Attribution isn't just the right thing to do, it's part of being a good internet citizen. When thinking about consistency in fonts and colors, the first thing you should ask yourself is whether your organization has an existing style guide or templates that you can use. A style guide sets the standard for any document created by an organization and typically prescribes fonts, colors, and palettes use of logos, and other decisions that have to do with the organization's branding and image. Shown here are snippets of the Syracuse University Style Guide. Templates provide a preset format for a document used so that the format does not have to be recreated each time. We created a style guide for D4L, and the content you see in these modules uses a template for the PowerPoint slides that form the basis of the videos. If style guides and templates exist, then someone did the hard work for you. If they don't exist, consider making one yourself as you go. At a minimum, keeping track of the fonts, templates, and colors you use will keep you from scratching your head Every time you have to make a change or a new piece of content, trying to figure out what color you used the last time. A final word on style guides is that they are usually developed for print content first. Many organizations may have updated their style guides for best practices in web usability, but if yours hasn't, start a conversation with your marketing team about the importance of having web-friendly branding and maybe even offer to help them update if you can. As librarians, we hear a lot about fair use, but that concept gets pretty murky when you go beyond text-based paper materials. Instead of guessing whether the image you found qualifies as fair use, we recommend looking in places that have easy-to-determine rights management right out of the gate. Creative Commons uses the pictured licenses to let creators choose whether material is public domain right up to all rights reserved. There are a lot of image collections that use Creative Commons licensing or provide other easy to determine rights and usage options. So give yourself a break and go straight for the images you know you can use. Also, it's generally a good practice to have attribution for any images you use that are not your own, even if they're in the public domain. It comes down to being a good education citizen. Not only are you giving credit where credit is due, but you're providing a way for others to find images you used if they think they might also be able to use them. As long as you minimally provide the name of the creator, the site you retrieved it from, and the link, there's no wrong way to cite an image in your multimedia content. 
as you can see in our own attribution of this Creative Commons license illustration, we did not need to credit the author because it's public domain. But if you want to use this image in your own work, won't it be great to just click through the link instead of having to search for it? In this week's resources, we've shared some of our favorite go-to resources for free and open image collections and those that have easy to determine rights management. The example here is one of the most popular sources of images, Google Images. But instead of doing a search and grabbing whatever image you like, protect creators and yourself by narrowing the options with their usage rights limiter, which allows you to select from a few reuse options. Then you only see the images that suit your needs and are ethical to use. In week one of this module, you were introduced to many elements of usability and accessibility that you should put into practice if you aren't already, like using captioning, providing text transcripts using alt tags on images, using large fonts without serifs, and having high contrast when using text and color together. We mention it again here because so many of the choices you make around visual elements will impact the usability and accessibility of your content. So while you're in the planning stages, you'll want to plan for this also. There's a checklist in your workbook for this module that includes the most common usability and accessibility elements you want to include in your plan. But for extra good measure, it helps to use independent web-based tools that will evaluate your content for you and let you know where you can make improvements. We have included a few of those in your resources for this week. Once you have chosen ethical images and built accessibility and usability into your recording draft, you're ready to move on to selecting tools that you'll use to turn this static project into a dynamic recording.